I came into this industry not knowing anything about corrections, okay? <laughs> so uh, back in 2011, I was listening to a podcast, actually, about inmate, an inmate journey uh, going into the correctional process. And what struck me wasn't so much the inmate journey as much as it was the family's journey. The people who were supporting uh, the inmate, the people who had now lost their breadwinner, uh, you know, the person who was making, who had a full-time job. So all of the stresses that went with that uh, and the hardships that went with that. Um, and so it really touched me in, in a lot of ways. Uh, I worked in Washington, D.C. for a long time on Capitol Hill and technology. And so I know what the, I knew what the power of this new thing called cloud-based computing could do and, and could help those people. And again, being an entrepreneur, having done this multiple times, I listened to those stories and I just thought, you know, there's got to be a better way for these people, uh, this journey. So not knowing anything about corrections, uh, I reached out to my local sheriff uh, here in uh, Tennessee and said, hey, you know, tell me about this. And what, what is this? And so I went to the sheriff's department. I learned a lot about corrections that way. I went, I had the sheriff book me into the, to the jail where I could spend time with the inmates and talk about their journey and sort of like really just kind of get a PhD in, in the inmate experience. And so that's what I did. And uh, I came out of that experience, taking about two years to learn that industry to create a software system that was a cloud-based software system. I remember this was 2012. <laughs> cloud-based uh, software system that uh, allowed the inmate to continue to communicate with their family members, to be able to process payments, to do all kinds of things that just ease the burden of mo mostly the family who was trying to support an inmate through my, maybe by giving money through their commissary accounts, paying for phone calls, whatever it could be. And that's how this journey began. So, you know, we started, uh, I, I mentioned the journey. We started with a small, uh, you know, my just learning the experience. And then we actually launched our first cloud-based computing system in rural Western Kentucky. And you can only imagine the uh, first time I went to a local sheriff or jail in a rural county in, in the United States and Western Kentucky saying, I'm going to put all your inmates data in the cloud, right? Uh, they looked at me as if I had horns on my head and uh, I was doing something that, that, you know, you can't do that, basically, was what I said. There's security problems. There's, you don't know my inmates. They're, they're horrible, you know, those kinds of things. And so we were able to take all that and move that into, uh, into what's now very, very common across the United States. So, you know, the needs... Uh, the journey, it changes a lot, you know, in corrections, we connect with people when they're at their lowest points in life. Uh, either the inmate is at its lowest point because they've obviously been put into a correctional facility or the family members who are supporting this person. They're also at their lowest, one of their lowest points. They've lost their breadwinner. They've lost their father. They've lost their mother, whatever it might be to the system. Right. So, you know, I, I believe that um, in our professional journey here, we can be a catalyst to change, a catalyst that can provide that, that continuity for somebody to continue their communications journey with, with that individual, but also, you know, help them fix, help them fix themselves as they're going through this process, be it through the helping the families understand this process or, or whatever, the more we can bridge technology to help that journey, that's what we try to do here. So 
I think one of the highlights of the career, I, I mentioned going back and talking about 2012, uh, bringing cloud-based technology to a, a, a jail and corrections market and how just crazy that was. But now fast forward to the year 2020 uh, when COVID hit and you had to shut down correctional facilities, you had to shut down access, you had to shut down visitors coming to the jails uh, to visit with, with you know, people. Uh, the good news is, is those that had adopted this cloud-based uh, technology and our video, our video products and our communication products that were all cloud-based. And when I talk about cloud-based, we had a cloud-based system inside the facility, but everything on the outside was all app-based. So the family members could, could simply download an app. They could now visit with the inmate via video, through our app, through things like that. Uh, there was no shutdown. There was no, in, you know, in America, at least, a, visit, a visitation is a right. It's not a privilege. So as a right, the inmate needed to have those visits. I mean, it was a part of the process. So we were able to uh, facilitate that through the technology we'd already built. Those that had adopted the cloud technology uh, prior to COVID saw seamless flow and those that uh, were non-believers before became believers uh, during the uh, COVID. Uh, so we saw explosive growth. So in terms of where we are with Tyler, so that attracted Tyler's attention. Tyler uh, saw us. Tyler Technology is an interesting company. I don't know how much you know about it, but they are the largest government IT company probably in the world. And so um, at Tyler, we take a very, it's a very one Tyler approach. We know that corrections is connected to courts. We know the courts is connected to supervision. We know that supervision is connected to other things. We know that corrections is, is tied to reentry. Uh, so all of those things, when you take all those across the board, Tyler has technology platforms in every one of those areas. As a matter of fact, they're the leader in the courts uh, in the United States and the courts software. So taking that one Tyler approach, being able to plug in each of those things, and you're beginning to see the symbiotic relationship going across all the technology platforms that at some point, you know, we envision a future where everything is connected uh, from the court experience. So the second the, uh, a person is picked up on the highway, to going through the court system, being incarcerated, and then exiting that journey is hopefully on one singular platform. And we're talking about predictive AI. We're talking about all kinds of things that will allow those, you know, to be able to help those people. In America, recidivism is a terrible problem, 90% or more. Our goal is to try to get that obviously down to as much as we can. But if we, if we can get to 70%, we'll have a huge win. And so that's what, that's what we're striving for. So So, uh, I mean, obviously, AI is, is, is growing every single day. It's changing every day right now in front of us right, as we look at it. So Tyler recently made a couple of acquisitions in the AI space. And so our, our teams are currently taking a look at those AI technologies and seeing where they can be embedded in things. So imagine an inmate uh, being booked in and being able to sort of predict an outcome for an inmate, obviously, you're never going to get it 100% correct, but you, if you can predict an outcome for somebody based on these particular things, like they have an anger management problem, and we can get them in these types of programs and give them this type of outcome, hopefully we have improved that outcome along that journey. I think it's, it's going to be an iterative process. It's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight, but I do think AI technology is going to inform us as we go along that journey and, and, uh, and we're going to, it's going to move rapidly, I believe. Um, so I think the, the correctional facility of today, five years from now, is going to look very, very different in terms of, of the way we program for inmates and the way we do things uh, to help them, you know, to have better outcomes. We want to make good citizens here. We don't want to just be, be babysitting people. So that's our goal um, at Tyler. 
I will also add Tyler's invest a lot of money. This is going to sound weird for a software company, but we're investing a lot of money in the hardware components of this as well. And so we're opening up a large manufacturing facility where we're putting out, you know, industrial grade hardened tablets, hardened kiosk machines, things that inmates can use to actually have more access to the software. You know, that's a big deal uh, is having not, o- not only just to have the software, it's also to be able to have access to the software. And so Tyler sees that and has put a lot of money into the hardware components and the ability for an inmate to access the software. <music>